Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast is all about our journey into the woods of ourselves, getting to know who we are, where we are, and where we're going in life so that we can create the life that we want to live. It's about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. It's also about mindset. Our beliefs are such an important part of this journey, and there are so many ways for us to change our mindset so that we can more easily live a life of expansive joy. This podcast is also about going literally into the woods and spending time in nature, and how that can help us on our own personal journey of self-knowledge. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now let's get into this week's episode. Hello, adventurers, and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 439. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another exciting guest. Today, I talk with Raquel Packets about how to rewire your mindset through hiking. I'm really excited to introduce this week's guest. She left her corporate job in 2019 and began hiking daily for her mental well-being. Raquel used hiking as an escape from the anxiety and the unknowns as she transitioned into a full-time entrepreneur. And as she hiked, she listened to authors, audiobooks, podcasters, and influential people that helped her to rewire her negative thought loops. Now, as you know, I love everything mindset related, and I really love how Raquel combined mindset work with hiking and outdoor adventures. She has a really great perspective on how to easily change your limiting beliefs, while at the same time practicing mindfulness in the outdoors. So who is Raquel Packets? Raquel is the president of Zen Freight Solutions Incorporated, founder of Healthy Happy Hiker, wife, mother, and healer. She began her business journeys just a few short weeks after graduating with a BA in business management over the course of two and a half years. This, of course, was made possible by the fact that she loves to learn. This ambition to fill her mind flourished at the opportunities that were in front of her in the logistics field. After getting a decade plus of experience in logistics, learning the ups and downs and rights and wrongs, she chose to leave the corporate world to focus on her health, family, and quality of life. This would mark the start of a new way of life, including healthy living, mindfulness, self-love, and entrepreneurship. She continues to grow, evolve herself, and her portfolio every single day. So what are you going to learn in this week's episode? We talk about how hiking helped Raquel with her mental health. We discuss the kinds of podcasts and audiobooks that she listened to. We explored how hiking helped Raquel rewire her negative thought loops, how hiking can help with a major identity shift, why hiking provides a safe place to see your true self, how hiking can help you to find your purpose, how Raquel uses breathwork and body movement on her hiking and outdoor adventures, and finally, her top tips for other people who may be struggling with mental illness and want to use hiking and other tips to improve their mental health and well-being. Before we get into today's episode, I just wanted to mention I had a weird microphone issue happen about two minutes into the episode. Please don't let that disturb you too much. I'm really sorry about that, but the rest of the interview is absolutely fine. So, sorry, and I hope you enjoy this week's episode. Hello, Raquel. How are you? I am great. Good morning. How are you today? Good. I'm really looking to talking to you about your adventures and how they've changed your life. Oh, thank you. I'm super excited to be here. (laughs) So, can you start out by telling us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure, sure. I'm Raquel Packets. I'm a Pennsylvania resident here in the United States, and I am a CEO of a transportation management company called Zen Freight Solutions. And I also utilize hiking on a regular basis to help my mental health and to keep my physical health in store. And I'm also a published author of the best selling book, 21. That's me. (laughs) Cool. Can I ask where in Pennsylvania you live or where you're from? Sure. Yeah. I am born and raised here in Butler, which is about an hour north of Pittsburgh. So I'm on Western PA. Oh, both of my parents are originally from Pittsburgh. And I think my grandparents from somewhere north of Pittsburgh, but I can't remember where. Oh, that's so awesome. That's right where I am. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) (laughs) So hiking, is that your favorite outdoor adventure? Yes, 100%. 100%. It's my go-to when I'm stressed or when I'm anxious or even when I just want to go just get away. 
I go to the woods. I just go and find a trail and hike until I feel better. And then I come back. (laughs) Sounds like a plan. So how did you get into hiking? Oh, well, I wasn't always a hiker. A few years ago, I had realized that I was really unhappy in my life, in my corporate job. So I started to walk every day on my lunch break. And I realized that hour of walking outside and hearing the birds. And I actually started to notice the trees change. And I was like, wait a minute. I've been living in like a fog for years and I I haven't noticed the world around me. I had to rewire my brain so that I could become an entrepreneur and hiking is where I did that. I just listened to a lot of audiobooks and hiked the entire day if I had to <laughs> just to get my mental health in in a good positive place. Yeah, I think hiking and outdoor adventures and exercise and just getting into nature is really really beneficial for a lot of people in terms of helping with anxiety and depression and just mental health in general. Oh, 100%. I think we underestimate that we could just even step outside and take a minute to just breathe and listen Mm. and notice what's around us. I think I noticed that's the biggest thing for me is we get so caught up in our heads that we forget to take a minute and be present. Her beautiful place that we are right now and notice the trees and the birds and the grass. and, And I think... Through hiking, I've found this connection with nature and it's really beautiful. I just continue to enjoy watching the seasons change because it's always different. Every single day is different. Yes, it is. It is. And I think that's really interesting what you say about watching the seasons change because when we're sitting inside in an office, it's really easy to just not pay attention to what's going on outdoors or what's going on in the world, in the natural world. We can kind of get really disconnected from it. But if you're spending the time going hiking or doing something else outdoors all year round, it makes you so much more aware of the seasonal changes and just the natural energies of the world. Yeah. It kind of gives you a different perspective too. Yeah. I think hiking definitely helped me a lot through COVID. Just getting away from all of the fear and the unknown and just being like, okay, what I do know is that this path is here and I know where it goes Mm -hmm. and I can trust the woods around me. There's just something very grounding about being underneath the canopy of trees and being on the trail and just being out there on your own. It's just very healing. (laughs) Yeah, I absolutely agree. So, but one thing a lot of women are really nervous about being out in nature or going hiking on their own. So did that happen to you? Were you nervous about that? I was nervous when I started. I actually started hiking at a local park that's right in the city here. Mm -hmm. There's about five miles worth of trails and I could hear the highway. So like, to me, that wasn't nearly as scary as going out to the deep woods Mm -hmm. and hiking where they're could be no person for miles. I figured, you know what, if I get lost, I can just walk towards the road. And I hike with my dog as well. But now I've gotten a little more adventurous and I go out to the game lands and we'll hike out there. And sometimes I even drive a couple hours to go see new areas, new state parks and things like that to just get a new trail to follow and a new perspective. Nice. I like that. And I think that's really important because especially for people who are a bit fearful about going into the outdoors and getting into the wilderness, start small, start with what feels safe and then expand from there. Yes, yes. And if you have to start with friends, right? Like I did that for a while. I had people meet me and we walked at the park together. And it's really funny because that kind of has now led to my new adventure that is, is up and coming, which is the Happy Hiking Academy. And it hasn't been fully published yet, but I'm working on it. And that is just bringing people together to mm. hike together and get outdoors and connect because, you know, now we're, we're so disconnected from each other. And I personally don't enjoy meeting up at a restaurant and just sitting and eating. I would much rather move my body and, mm. and see things and experience things together with another human. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when you guide a group like that, you're also serving as an example and you can tell stories about how hiking has changed your life and you can inspire other people to do the same. Yes, yes. And hiking has 100% changed my life. It's helped me rewire my mindset a Mm. lot. So let's talk a little bit about that because I love mindset. I love talking about mindset. I love talking about rewiring mindset. But I think you have a really interesting approach to this, which is rewiring your mindset through hiking and getting outdoors and also listening to things on your hike. So can you tell us about how you did that? 
Sure, sure. So when I started hiking on a regular basis, that was when I had decided to leave the corporate world and I didn't have a plan. All I knew was that I was extremely unhappy, extremely depressed and anxious. And where I was in my life, I felt like it was a mistake and I didn't need to be there anymore. Mm. So I had done a lot of meditating. And in one of my meditations, I was just like, had this feeling or this person tell me that you need to leave, just be done. It'll be okay. So I did without a plan. (laughs) And when I got home after that, I was a hot mess because (laughs) I like security. I like safety. I'm a hard worker (laughs) and not having any idea what I was waking up to the next day. Really, I lost my identity. So I found myself uh, picking myself up and going outdoors because that made me feel good. And then I started to listen to audiobooks that helped me look from a different viewpoint. Wayne Dyer is one of my amazing guides that I like to reference to. He definitely helped me realize if you can change your thoughts, you can change your life. And really getting to those self-limiting beliefs and understanding where they come from It's a long process. I'm still working on things myself now, but I would say that those four weeks that I took to really just hike and find myself Mm -hmm. helped catapult me into this entrepreneur mindset and being able to withstand the stress throughout the day-to-day now in my life. (laughs) That's really interesting because it was kind of like this four-week sabbatical wherein you shifted identities and completely changed your life. I think that's really, really fascinating. Yeah, I don't know that it happened quite that fast. I mean, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I still was hiking and trying to become an entrepreneur. I slowly have transformed it. I'm now in two years into my business and I have three employees. Nice. Um, four if you count my husband, but I consider him more of a partner than an employee. And we're slowly growing and I'm learning every single day. And I still try to take time away every day to at least get out and get an hour of Mm. movement and walking in nature, whether I make it into the woods or if I just have to go to the trail that's right down the road, that's bike trail, Mm -hmm. then I do that. It's just a matter of getting outside for me. Nice. And I think that's also something that people really struggle with. And I sometimes struggle with it as well. Like when things are busy and you've got stuff going on, and you've got like a full inbox, and you've got clients to respond to. And yet, you know that it would be really helpful if you got outside for an hour. So what do you find motivates you to get up out of your desk and make it happen? If I hear a bird, honestly, (laughs) if I hear like yesterday, I heard a bird and I was like, oh my gosh, I took my window. I need to get outside. Like it's that interruption of the day to day. You see, I can very easily get into workaholic syndrome yep. and just sit here and work a 10, 12 hour a day and then look up and I've never once stepped foot outside of the office, mm. let alone outside my house and into the woods. So I am practicing interrupting my day to go outside, be mm-hmm. present. And that helps with my mindset as well. It helps me think clearer, right? Rather than staying so super or hyper focused on work, work, work. I'm trying to also bring in this feminine energy of relaxation and Mm. allowing and being present in the very moment. Mm. And how does nature help you to be present? I think because I have to use all of my senses. I'm listening, I'm feeling, I'm breathing, I'm seeing, and it's just extremely healing to me. Mm. It sounds like you're practicing a very kind of mindful type of hiking, because I know I, in the past, have kind of gotten into the habit of like going out for a hike or for a trail run or something and just like going, going, going and like putting in the miles or putting in the time or, but maybe not being aware of everything that's going on around me. Yeah. And there's days that I do that too, right? I'll put my headphones in and I just go. Mm. But overall, I think you're right. I enjoy a mindful hike. I take Mm. it nice and slow. It's not a matter of how far I go. It's a matter of when I feel good. It's a feeling that I get after... 15 minutes of being present, I can feel that stress melt away. And I'm like, oh, I feel better now. Yeah. (laughs) I'm in a different place in my head now. (laughs) Yeah. I occasionally walk long distance trails here in England and I often like explain my experiences as being kind of a mobile meditation because I'm not meditating 
But I'm all alone in the middle of nowhere, just with myself. And I don't know, I just find it just shifts my state of mind in such a profound way. It really does. Do you find listening to the birds and noticing everything around you to help you get to that place? So when I'm hiking, I definitely find like stopping on a regular basis and really tuning in kind of helps me stay connected. And I definitely think I get that more when I'm walking than when I'm running. However, I also really like taking pictures when I'm running. And I think that also helps me stay connected to what I'm really experiencing when I'm going through, you know, on the trails. Like if I see a beautiful trail or if I see a beautiful view or plant or tree or whatever, I think that helps me kind of stay connected to what I'm experiencing. I don't know if that makes sense. but Oh, but it 100% does. I have way too many photos on my phone than yeah. any one person does. <laughs> And I like sharing my experiences with people. So like my Instagram is basically trail pictures or plant pictures of stuff that I've seen on the trails because I like sharing my experiences with other people and in the hopes of maybe inspiring them to get outdoors as well. So I think, I don't know, I think it's very important for me to fill up my social media with nature stuff. I agree with you. I think that <laughs> we need more of that. We need more positivity and grounding things being put out there rather than judgmental or fearful. Mm. Um, I mean, this is kind of getting off track, but like social media, a lot of people complain about it and say that like it's very toxic, but I think these are just tools and you can use them to create a beautiful space or you can create them, use them to create a toxic space. So my social media, not just the stuff I put out there, but the stuff I follow is full of hikers and runners and like people doing stuff in the outdoors and nature people. And so I'm constantly kind of feeding my head with that. And I think that just fuels my passion for getting outdoors. Yeah, I agree. You know, I don't have quite as much time to scroll yeah. anymore. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to create my day pretty structured, but whenever I do, I'm definitely making sure that the people that I'm being influenced by are ones that I want to be yes. and that are bringing some positivity into my life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So can you tell us a little bit more about what kinds of podcasts and what other kinds of audiobooks did you listen to when you were going through this process of rewiring your mindset? Oh, sure. You know what? I'm going to open my Audible here just so that I can make sure I reference the right ones. So one of the very first books that I listened to was The Tao of Fooling Feeling, which is by Pete Walker. And it's a deep dive into psychology and into being present and mindful with yourself Mm. and with your thoughts. Pete Walker is an extremely intelligent man. He helps with, he's written a lot of books on PTSD and trying to overcome complications in your life. Another one was Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life by Wayne Dyer. Wayne Dyer is one of my biggest mentors. Anything that was really self-development, honestly. As far as YouTube, I listened to Tom Bailu and Impact Theory. He is always bringing on new authors. And from that, then I'll go and grab another book and listen to that if somebody calls to me in one of those. So I'm just always finding inspiration and trying to bring that to me so I can then put it right back out there into the world. Mm, Yeah, I love that. So how do you think listening to all of these audiobooks and podcasts and positive things helped you to rewire your negative thought loops? Well, they helped me see from a different perspective. Yeah. They helped me understand, and this is going to go a little personal, but when I first left the corporate world, I was lost. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what my purpose was or yeah. where I was going. Yeah. And quite honestly, I was angry. I was angry at my parents for whatever I could blame them on. I was angry at my old boss for holding me back. And throughout the walking process and listening, I really got a new perspective in the fact that they did the best they could with what they had. Mm -hmm. And they brought me here in this beautiful place. And I found some gratitude for where I am. Mm -hmm. And I think finding that was the biggest shift for me. Instead of blaming and being upset, being able to step back and say, wait a minute, I've got a pretty awesome life and Mm. there's nothing stopping me from doing what I want to do now. So it definitely took a lot of books. I think I have about 60 different audio books on my phone now, plus all the podcasts that I listen to. And I was not a reader prior to any of this. I've listened to music and that was it. Mm -hmm. But I started putting about three hours of a day of other people's perspective 
into my mind. And that really helped me break up those self-limiting beliefs that I had. Mm. I think that's really interesting that you said that you weren't a reader before. And I think with all the kind of newish technologies that we have now with ebooks and audiobooks, it's really helping people to ingest books that didn't really enjoy them by reading with their eyes before necessarily. It makes it so much easier because some people just process things better by hearing them. That would be me. I didn't realize that yeah. until I started listening to a book. And I'm like, wait a minute, I can retain this. But if you give me something to read, I'm reading the same paragraph three or four times before I can comprehend it. And I just realized that that's my strength is listening yeah. rather than reading. And that was the turning point, you know, to be able to find Audible and YouTube and Spotify to be able to listen to podcasts. I think we're all very blessed to have such an amazing technology at our fingertips. And at any point in time, we can get another person's perspective. Yes. And that's pretty amazing. It is. And we can take it with us on the go and we can do other things as we get this perspective. Yes. Yeah. And I think that hiking while I was listening to things, although it's not scientifically proven, but I do believe you're using both sides of your body. And that also helps to rewire things mm -hmm. because as you're walking using your left side and then your right side, it's changing the neuro pathways mm. in your brain. Yeah. And I think also you do have to have a certain level of awareness as you're hiking or walking in nature. You can't just kind of completely zone out. Otherwise you'll trip on fall on your face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I think also the act of having to be mindful of your movements kind of lets things slip into your mind easier because you don't have the negative mind chatter or other things going on. Like, I don't know. I think that has something to do with it as well. Yeah. I would th say that it probably does, you know, whenever you're, I don't know, just being out on a trail by yourself with no one else around you, it just really allows you to lift your veil mm -hmm. and allow yourself to see your true self rather yeah. than this facade or whatever it is that you put on because you it's the way that you want people to see you. I find the woods a safe place for me to go and see myself in my true version. Oh, I really, really like that. And I think, you know, they say wherever you go, there you are. And of course, when you're out hiking alone, you're just out there with you. And there's nothing else to really kind of distract you or, you know, you're with yourself unfiltered. And that can be good and that can be challenging. I mean, it's always good, even if it's challenging. <laughs> you can work through it. But, <laughs> but if you have the self-awareness to see, oh, like, this is really difficult. Let's work through this. I think that can be really, really powerful. Yes. I can't say that I did it all alone. Like I said, I had people that would hike with me and give me their insight and be like, mm -hmm. wait a minute, maybe, maybe don't focus on this. Let's redirect you to this location too, and try to look at different areas of my life. But overall, it's a lot of self-development and commitment to trying to just better yourself. And I just find that that's my happy place, mm. <laughs> being under the trees and yeah. just really noticing everything around me. Yeah. Yeah. So I read on your website that you also work, do use breath work and body movement on your hiking. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah. So I had worked with a somatic movement therapist uh -huh. for a little while when I was trying to unravel all of these self-limiting beliefs in myself. And what he showed me is that if you take time to breathe and focus and center yourself, you can find the areas of pressure or pain or energy, whatever it is, that is stuck. Mm -hmm. And if you just allow it and focus on it for a few moments, usually through the breath, it'll dissipate. And it's just because we have all of these emotions and things that come up in our lives and we hold on to them. I know my hips were aching extremely bad. And throughout this work of breathing and yoga and meditation and focusing on it, I've been able to alleviate my hip pain by 60%. So when I have people come hike with me, I ask them to start with a, let's put our phones down, let's focus and be mm -hmm. here and present. And then we're going to focus on our breathing for two minutes and just really ground ourselves into this present moment. Breath can do such amazing things. Just mm -hmm. a baby knows how to breathe, right? Yeah. They know how to breathe the perfect way from your belly first and then your chest. And a lot of us get stuck in this fight or flight mode in mm -hmm. life. And 
we don't realize it, but we're shallow breathing. We're breathing just from our chest and super fast. So taking time to just sit and breathe can be extremely beneficial, even just as beneficial as getting outside in nature. And it's such a simple thing. We just need guided on how to do it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about the Happy Hiking Academy? Is that something you're going to be kind of incorporating into your group hikes? Yeah. So currently on Facebook, I'm known as the Healthy Happy Hiker. Okay. It's a little bit of a tongue twister, but that's what came to my mind a few years ago. And that's where I share all of my hiking adventures. And from that, I realized, you know what, I want to help other people get out there. So we started the website, the Happy Hiking Academy. I haven't fully launched it or advertised it yet because I'm planning on taking the last two weeks of this year to revamp and just really get a good focus. But the goal with that is to bring community together, get people outside and in nature and just enjoying being in this world and also to spread positivity. Yeah, Yeah, that's wonderful. I think it's really good work to be inspiring other people to get outdoors and just think that has a ripple effect in everyone's lives. Oh, it definitely does. It's such a small scale, but... It touches my heart that one of the ladies that started hiking with me a few years ago, she now hikes almost every single day and she puts a picture online and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I helped her get there. And that just makes me feel so amazing. I've met so many lovely people, you know, just joining me in the woods and I get to know all about their lives and how amazing they are as well. So it's an amazing connecting tool and I am extremely excited to share it out there and get more of a community together on that. Absolutely. I think it's a great way to connect. I think people relax in nature in a way that they might not in other kind of get together environments or meet up environments. Yes. Yes, for sure. I feel like it's, I don't know. Like I said, I think that when you're outside and you're just, you're being you, you're just free Mm. rather than reflecting what you want to see or what you want other people to see of you. You know, you can kind of just be yourself. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your book. Oh, sure. So the book is called 21. I am a contributing author and it is 21 entrepreneurs that share their stories of business resilience Mm -hmm. through COVID in 2021. It's amazing. There are so many amazing women that give little nuggets of knowledge. It's been such a blessing to me. I'm now connected to all of these other women and they inspire me on a daily basis It's definitely worth the pickup. It's available on on my website. It's available on Amazon as well. I think it's now being sold for $5. So it's very affordable because each chapter is only 2,000 words. It's a really easy read. Mm. So you can can pick up a chapter and then move on. And the book's broken out in three sections. You've got success, and then you've got faith and inspiration. Yeah. In here. So you've got everything that you could need to help yourself grow, whether Mm. you want to be a business owner or you're just a mom. I don't mean that. um, Excuse me. Not not just a mom because that is a hard job. Yes. Yes. (laughs) I, I now have an adopted daughter and being a mom just for the past two years has been a life changer for me. So, yeah, I really would love anyone to go out there and pick up the book because there is a lot of really good nuggets of knowledge in it. Mm, I like that. I like kind of the spin on kind of getting through 2021 and how your business has gotten through it because it's been such a challenging year in 2020, of course, as well for so many people. Oh, yes, it was. I mean, I'm in transportation. So when everything's shut down, Mm. things still had to move. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was still working and trying to figure out my path through all of the fog. And my business was very heavily on oil field. And that kind of came to a complete halt. So I had to basically start over again at, at my second year in business and get new clientele and pivot, which Mm. is, we're here and it's going well. (laughs) I'm super grateful because I guess that's the way that I was supposed to go. Yeah. Well, and how did nature help you through that? Because that's a massive business transition and it's incredibly stressful, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's when I hiked every single day. (laughs) (laughs) Just kept on doing what you knew worked. (laughs) Yeah. The the world slowed down, so so did I. 
as we weren't getting up and driving to an office. Instead, I was taking that time to go out and start my morning getting my mental health in the right place so that Mm -hmm. I could come in and do something that I had never done before, which was make cold calls and put myself out there to try to, to bring on new business, which was a challenge in itself, let alone put that into bringing in another human into my household and going through COVID at the same time. So I relied heavily on my hikes and nature to ground myself and Mm. really to keep me sane yeah throughout all of the craziness yeah i think a lot of us discovered the power of nature and just surviving <laughs> and thriving yes. in some cases so raquel what are your top tips for others who may be struggling with mental health issues and might be curious about how hiking and nature can help them i would say spend an hour a day outside whether you're walking or just sitting just an hour outside can change your entire mood it's extremely healing other than that i would say journal journal as often as you can just to help get those thoughts out. There's something very healing about taking the thoughts in your head and putting them on paper and then reading them back to yourself because you may not actually agree with what you wrote down Mm -hmm. the first time, (laughs) Yep. but you don't realize that until you go back and reread it and then you question things. And I think that that helps to really refocus And again, going back to change your thoughts, change your life, right? If you can see what the thought is that you don't agree with, you can start to change it and then your life will will follow. Read, learn as much as you can. There's so much available to us and we're in such a great time of our lives to just access anything we want. Go out and take advantage of it. YouTube is free. Spotify is free. You're getting all of this amazing content from amazing people such as yourself, just just sharing. And it's all just being put out there for the good. Yes. Um, so so listen and learn and, and take in as much information as you can. And I would say the last thing is find faith. Mm-hmm. Find faith, whatever that faith may be. Just knowing that I am this little tiny person on this huge planet <laughs> And that there has to be a purpose. There is a purpose for every single one of us. And this whole journey has helped me connect to my faith in a way that I never had before. And just having that knowing that I'm being supported and I'm being guided in one way or another. It's like a safety net, Mm -hmm. right? It just allows you to take that first step into the unknown, but knowing that you are going to be okay. Yeah. And I think it gives you hope too. Because sometimes things can feel hopeless. Yes. And I think that's the number one thing I found through this. You know, I was in a dark place. This uh, anxiety and depression was hope Hmm. is the light. Yes. Hope is the way out. And gratitude helps get you there for sure. Hmm. So I now spend every morning in prayer and gratitude and being grateful for what I know is going to happen throughout the day or what I want to happen throughout the day and visualizing that Hmm. and then going into my day. Sounds like a good start to the day. I know when I'm struggling, gratitude really just turns everything around. Just writing a little list of things that I'm grateful for, just even if I don't feel like it, even if I'm rebelling and I'm resisting it, like it just completely shifts my perspective. It really does. And usually it starts out and you're like, oh, what am I grateful for? I don't know. The sky. I don't know. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the chair I'm sitting on in my office. <laughs> yes. It's like you're reaching. Like, I don't yes. know. But then as you start to focus in, you really start to change those yeah. feelings inside as you realize, wait a minute, I'm grateful for the fact that I'm breathing right now yeah. and I'm here and, and in this life for your family. One of my favorites is this home. I'm so Mm. grateful that I have a home that's warm whenever it's cold outside. It's a tiny little thing, but really when you sit and think about it, it's a really big deal Yeah, that I'm not struggling and I'm not outside. So it's a great perspective to find that gratitude in in what you already have. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You're right on track. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) So Raquel, where can people find you online and learn more about you and what you do? Sure. So I'm on most social media, LinkedIn, Raquel Packets, Facebook at Raquel Packets and Healthy Happy Hiker. And Instagram is Raquel Packets. My website is zenfreightsolutions.com and the happyhikingacademy.com as well. 
Cool. How exciting. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really love talking with you about how hiking helped you to rewire your negative thought loops and give you a new perspective. And I just think it's very inspiring. Well, thank you so much. I am honored to be here and I very much appreciate you putting all of this amazing content out there. Oh, thank you. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks. You too, Raquel. Please drop me a line and let me know what you thought of this week's episode. You can email me at holly at hollywharton.com or find me online and get in touch there. If you enjoyed this episode, you might want to check out these related episodes. 414, I talk with Rebecca Walsh about solo hiking for women. 367 is a solo show. I talk about finding yourself through solo travel and outdoor adventures. 332, I talk with Joanna Hennon about how to step into a new identity even when you're not sure what it looks like. 295, I talk with Sharon Locke about how to make mindset work a habit. And finally, 251 is a solo show on how to step into a new business identity. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 439 for the show notes on this episode, including all the links and stuff that we talked about. And finally, happy trails to you and happy holidays if you celebrate a holiday at this time of year. Have a great week. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.